next thing to do is press Y on the keyboard to check the audio system options. The driver system needs to be set to ACO. ACO gives you low latency performance with real-time monitoring of VST plugins and virtual instruments. If you are using the built-in sound card of your computer, it's worth experimenting with the Magic's low latency driver, or you may prefer to use ACO for all. Most Firewire, USB or PCI sound card interfaces give excellent results nowadays. From the drop-down list, there is a choice between Magic's low latency or ACO Fireface. In my case, I'm using an RME Fireface 400, so ACO Fireface will be the correct driver to use. The ACO buffer is set to 512 by default, which should be okay for most things, although you can always experiment by setting it lower, depending on the performance of your computer. Clicking on the control panel button will open up the control panel for the respective audio device you are using. I think I will set the ACO buffer at 256 samples, which will give a faster response. I prefer to set the device resolution driver communication to 32-bit. Under monitoring setup, leaving the fader to the far right should give you the best results under most circumstances. This will give you a low latency mixer and live inputs. Monitoring behavior is set to tape monitoring and I usually tick mix inputs and playback. So that should do for the audio system settings. Under audio devices, you have the choice to manage the inputs and outputs of your sound device. Under recording, you can enable or disable the inputs. I may as well leave inputs one to eight ticked. 9 to 10 is the digital input, which I will leave unticked for now. So this gives me 4 stereo or 8 mono inputs. For the playback device, I only really need outputs 1 and 2 right now. Although you can always enable more outputs for headphone mixes or surround mixing. It's also possible to relabel these devices if you feel the need by clicking on the rename button. So these inputs and outputs will now be accessible in the track editor. Next, I will look at the MIDI settings under the MIDI tab. I'm going to set the Global Record Device or MIDI Input Device to the Fireface 400 MIDI 1. This will be the input you will probably connect your MIDI keyboard to. The Global Play Device or MIDI Output Device will also be set to the Fireface MIDI 1. The Fireface 400 has two MIDI inputs and two MIDI outputs. I'm leaving both of these enabled as I also use a MIDI guitar sometimes as well. I suggest you disable the Microsoft GS Wavetable Synthesizer to avoid it turning up at inopportune moments when recording MIDI. Under Audio MIDI Synchronization, I normally set the sync velocity to 100%. It's also a good idea to enable note on chasing so that should do for the MIDI setup. If you are using VST plugins, it's important to set the VST plugin path. So I'm going to move down to the Effects tab and select VST DirectX Rewire. Click on the folder icon and select Browse VST Folder. In my case, it's under Drive C Program Files x86 Magic's Samplitude Pro VST Plugins. If you have more than one plugin directory, just browse to that and it will be remembered as well. It's also possible to activate Rewire just below. Anyway, once you have set the VST plugin paths, Samplitude will scan your VST plugin folders. You can see them being scanned below. It may take a while depending on how many VST plugins you have, but it will only happen once providing you haven't installed any new ones since the last scan. That's it, they're all scanned. Now that everything is configured correctly, it's a good idea to save the VIP as a template. This means that it can be chosen every time you start a new song. To do this, you need to go to File, Save Project as Template. The file browser should open up in the correct folder, so it's just a matter of giving it a name. I'm going to call this one Autoload. Although you may want to be more specific in the naming of templates. 
Click OK and now it's saved with that name. So now when I open up a new VIP, the setup window appears. When I click on the project template drop down list, autoload has been added to the bottom. Then it's a matter of selecting the file path, typing in the project name, and a new project will be created using the autoload template setting. Of course, you may wish to modify the autoload, so you can always resave the template at a later date. Anyway, I'll switch back to the original setup that I created for this tutorial.